overnight snowstorms were expected to hit Jerusalem, Mount Hermon, Tzfat, and other areas in the north of the country. Throughout tomorrow, there was a lot of rain this morning. Uh, flash flood warnings have been announced. In Israel, something remarkable is happening right now, as the promised land is experiencing an unusual amount of snow and rain. This is not just a regular natural occurrence, it's turning dry landscapes into thriving ones. The incredible rainfall has created rivers where none existed before. And in the desert, rain is like a miracle, transforming barren areas into vibrant ones. Israel usually enjoys sunshine, but lately, things got cooler. The air got colder, the sky got cloudy, and rain, a rare visitor, decided to show up. This unexpected change has everyone wondering what caused it. Scientists are looking at temperature changes and air pressure to understand why this weird weather happened. For many people in Israel who believe in God, this weather event is more than just rain and snow. The Bible talks about rain and snow as messages from God, and some see this as a blessing, an answer to prayers or a sign of good things to come. Others, while amazed, think it's important to understand the science behind it, too. Similar weather surprises have happened in Israel before, although not often. Studying these past events and how people reacted helps us understand the present situation better. We can also see how different cultures have interpreted and responded to such unusual weather throughout history. While faith offers its explanations, scientists are looking for answers based on facts. Climate change, a big issue these days, might be playing a role. They're trying to figure out if this is a sign of bigger climate changes or just a one-time event. To truly understand the rain and snow, we need to look at what was happening in the air. Scientists are studying things like air pressure, ocean currents, and wind patterns to see how they all work together to create rain and snow clouds over Israel. Now, before diving into the recent events, let's understand the geographical significance of Israel. Have you ever heard of Mount Hermon mentioned in the Hebrew Bible? It marked part of the northern border of the Promised Land and is known as the Eyes of the Nation due to its strategic role as Israel's primary early warning system. The summit of Mount Hermon is situated on the border between Syria and Lebanon, and it plays a vital role in Israel's geography. Moreover, Mount Hermon's significance goes beyond its role as a geographical landmark. The mountain is rich in biodiversity, hosting unique flora and fauna adapted to its specific climate. The seasonal snow on its peaks not only feeds vital water sources, but also sustains a delicate ecosystem that thrives in the harsh conditions of higher altitudes. In addition to its ecological importance, Mount Hermon has been a site of cultural and religious interest for centuries. It has been referenced in ancient texts, including the Hebrew Bible and the Book of Enoch, adding layers of historical and spiritual significance to the region. Pilgrims and scholars have been drawn to the mountain for its mythical associations and its commanding presence in the landscape. Furthermore, the control of Mount Hermon's southern slopes by Israel following the Six-Day War in 1967 has geopolitical implications. The mountain serves as a strategic vantage point overlooking Lebanon, Syria, and Israel. Its elevated position makes it a key element in Israel's defense and surveillance systems, underscoring its role as the eyes of the nation. As the snow-covered peaks contribute to the formation of rivers and streams, the water becomes a lifeline for the surrounding areas. The Sea of Galilee, fed by the Jordan River originating from Mount Hermon, plays a crucial role in providing fresh water to the region. The continuation of this natural process not only sustains ecosystems, but also supports agricultural practices and human settlements along the river's path. Interestingly, similar occurrences are observed in the Judean desert, where Jerusalem is situated. When it rains in the Jerusalem area, water from the surrounding mountains flows down through valleys, reaching into the Judean desert. Valleys fill up rapidly, 
creating rivers and bringing life to the desert. This natural phenomenon reminds us of biblical prophecies, such as those in the book of Zechariah 14. It speaks about a future event where the Savior of Israel will come, and when His feet touch the Mount of Olives, a mountain near Jerusalem, it will split in two, forming a great valley. This imagery of water flowing from the mountains to create valleys and rivers echoes the anticipation of divine intervention, symbolizing the connection between nature and the spiritual beliefs of the people. Additionally, in Zechariah's prophecy, verse 8, there's a mention of a remarkable event where living water will flow out of Jerusalem. This living water will be divided, with half of it flowing towards the Dead Sea and the other half towards the Mediterranean. It's foretold that on that day, everyone will recognize that the God of Israel is the king over the entire earth. In the same prophecy, Zechariah 14, it is described that the Mount of Olives will split in two, creating a great valley running from east to west. This split is a significant part of the anticipated events when Christ returns. The prophet Ezekiel, in an earlier vision, Ezekiel 47, also saw water flowing from the right side of the temple in Jerusalem. This water, originating from an aquifer, formed a stream that ran through the Judean wilderness to the Dead Sea. Interestingly, Israel already has a mountain aquifer that, until recently, supplied a third of the nation's water. This aquifer is quite remarkable, considering that Jerusalem and Heon are the highest mountains in Israel. The water from this aquifer rushes through Hezekiah's tunnel, and it was thought to be fed from melting snows, possibly as far away as eastern Turkey. Much of Israel's terrain is limestone, and there are many caves through which water might flow. The anticipated earthquake that will split the Mount of Olives upon Christ's return is expected to intersect this aquifer. This intersection will supply fresh waters that will flow through the Judean wilderness for 33 kilometers down to the Dead Sea. The flow will be so substantial that the salty waters of the Dead Sea will turn fresh and rise all the way up the Jordan Valley to the Sea of Galilee. The geographical details are fascinating. The Sea of Galilee is 225 meters below sea level, while the Dead Sea is even lower at 387 meters below sea level, making it the deepest lake globally. The Dead Sea, known for its extreme saltiness, currently prevents fish survival and is undrinkable for humans. However, the prophecy suggests that the volume of fresh water from the temple in Jerusalem, after Christ's return, will be so immense that it will sweeten the water, transforming the previously inhospitable waters of the Dead Sea into a source of life. Moreover, the transformation of the Dead Sea from a barren salty expanse into a source of life carries profound ecological and symbolic implications. The Dead Sea's extreme salinity has earned it the reputation of being one of the saltiest bodies of water globally, almost ten times saltier than the oceans. This harsh environment, coupled with the depth of the sea, has resulted in its inhospitality to marine life. Fish cannot survive in such salty waters, and drinking the water is lethal due to its high salinity. The prophecy foretells a remarkable reversal of this desolation. The abundance of fresh water flowing from the temple in Jerusalem after the return of Christ is anticipated to be so vast that it will sweeten the waters of the Dead Sea. The prophecy goes on to describe a fascinating turn of events at the Dead Sea, where people will catch fish, signaling a complete transformation of the once barren waters. The Jordan Valley, extending from NJ to Ename, north of the Sea of Galilee, will become a freshwater lake. Nedi, located on the western shores of the Dead Sea, is mentioned as a place where fresh water flows from beneath the Judean desert, sourced from Israel's mountain aquifer. The significance of the Mount of Olives is profound, being the second most famous mountain in Jerusalem after the Temple Mount on Mount Maria or Mount Zion. It holds historical and spiritual importance as the place from which Jesus ascended into heaven and where it is believed he will return one day. 
The Mount of Olives has witnessed many significant events in the Bible and modern history. Its olive groves, giving it the name Mount of Anointment, played a role in producing olive oil used to anoint Israel's kings and temple priests. The hill has a rich history as a place of prayer, with King David ascending to the Mount of Olives barefoot during a challenging time, as described in 1 Samuel 15. Prophets like Zechariah and Ezekiel foretold future judgments on Israel and prophesied about the restoration and regathering of the exiles from this very spot. Zechariah specifically pinpointed the Mount of Olives as the place where the Messiah would return, as stated in Zechariah 14.4. Additionally, the Mount of Olives holds significance as the praying place of Jesus, especially on the day before his crucifixion. The hill's connection to prayer, prophecy, and the key events in the life of Jesus underscores its central role in the narrative of redemption and restoration. In the Garden of Gethsemane, a place on the Mount of Olives, an angel comforted Jesus during a challenging time. Throughout his life, Jesus often went to the Mount of Olives to pray and seek solace. In the week leading up to his crucifixion, he visited this special hill three times. The first time, Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey, fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah the prophet. The crowds greeted him with joy, proclaiming him as the king in the name of the Lord. The second visit involved Jesus being in the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, discussing the upcoming events. Finally, on the night he was betrayed, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives to pray. So what does the Mount of Olives represent? It symbolizes an everlasting hope that Jesus, our Savior, remains constant through time. He conquered death, and one day he will rule from Jerusalem, bringing peace to the city and the entire world. This hill witnessed significant moments, from King David's defeats to Jesus' betrayal, weeping, and ascension to be with the Father. Looking at Jesus' visits to the Mount of Olives, we find profound meanings. In Luke 19, 28, 39, he fulfilled Zechariah's prophecy, arriving on a humble donkey while crowds hailed him as the king. Furthermore, delving into Luke 19, 28, 39 provides a captivating insight into the significance of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on a humble donkey. This event not only fulfilled the prophecy of Zechariah, emphasizing Jesus as the promised Messiah, but it also conveyed a powerful message about the nature of his kingship. Unlike earthly kings who might arrive in grandeur on majestic horses, Jesus deliberately chose a donkey, symbolizing humility and peace, rather than worldly power. The crowds, recognizing the fulfillment of prophecy, enthusiastically hailed Jesus as their king, shouting, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. This moment was not merely a triumphant entry into the city, it was a profound declaration of Jesus as the anticipated king of peace. The juxtaposition of humility and honor in this event laid the foundation for the deeper spiritual truths Jesus would later impart during his time on the Mount of Olives. This symbolic entry set the stage for the unfolding events during Jesus' second visit to the Mount of Olives. As his disciples sought understanding about the end times, Jesus provided them with insights into future events. His teachings on eschatology, or the study of end times, offered a glimpse into the tribulation and his second coming. The Mount of Olives became a classroom, where Jesus shared profound truths about the culmination of history and the establishment of God's kingdom. Jesus, the Messiah, went through death and rose again on the third day. Now he's seated in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. But God's plan for Israel, the nations, and all of us is still unfolding. Scriptures assure us that one day Jesus will bring an end to all conflicts and rule from Jerusalem. Seeking salvation on the Mount of Olives has been a tradition for centuries. In the 13th century, pilgrims started a unique practice during the Feast of Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles, on the Mount of Olives. People would ascend to the top, 
circling the summit in a joyful parade of song and celebration. This symbolic act, reminiscent of the temple service where priests circled the altar, continued for the first six days of the feast. On the last day, called Hoshana Rabbah, or the day of seeking salvation, the procession circled the summit seven times. The cry for salvation echoed from Jews worldwide and the pilgrims atop the Mount of Olives. Save us, we pray, O Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In Jewish tradition, the culmination of the High Holy Days brings us to Hoshana Rabbah, a day of significant spiritual weight. While Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is acknowledged for the judgment of sins, Hoshana Rabbah is considered the day when God finalizes judgment for each person. It marks a pivotal moment in the annual cycle of Jewish observances, reflecting the earnest prayers for salvation. It is believed that on this day, as the Lord descends upon the Mount of Olives, not only does He bring salvation to believers, but He also concludes judgment for everyone. Yeshua's triumphant entry into Jerusalem is linked to the Mount of Olives. Before Passover, he left Bethpage, near Bethany on the east side of the Mount of Olives. Humbly descending on a donkey, fulfilling Zechariah's prophecy from 500 years earlier, Yeshua understood that many would fail to recognize him as the promised Messiah. Despite this, in the last days, as the time of the Gentiles comes to an end, the blindness that prevented many from recognizing Yeshua is gradually lifting, fulfilling His prophecy. Throughout history, there have always been Jewish believers in Yeshua, Jesus. Many Jewish people followed Him during His first coming. As He entered Jerusalem, people laid their cloaks and leafy branches on the road, shouting His name. They recognized that His riding on a donkey fulfilled Zechariah's prophecy. Now, Let's explore the importance of rain in Israel. Rain over the summer is rare, and prayers for rain begin earnestly at the Feast of Tabernacles. Signs about water shortage and the importance of conservation are evident. Rain and drought in Israel hold spiritual significance. God intentionally placed His people in a land dependent on skies for rain, emphasizing their reliance on Him. In the Old Testament, God's prophets could seal up the heavens or send rain at His bidding. Drought was seen as punishment and rain as a blessing. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more interesting content. And let us know in the comments below, what do you think caused this weather phenomenon? Was it just Mother Nature or something more?